The other day someone contacted me looking for me to restore their father's hand plane. So it's a Stanley four and a half. The handles are a bit loose and the varnish is gone. There's a bit of surface rust all over the plane and she's as blunt as could be. So today we're gonna see if we can fix her up and get her going as if she was brand new. So the first thing we're gonna do is take the whole thing apart. Now it's very seized up. So I'm gonna use a generous amount of WD-40 there. Then I'm gonna grab our screwdriver and see if we can twist the whole thing loose and then we'll set all the pieces that's lucy gone mad there what's she doing anyway we'll set the whole thing down into its individual components now it's good that the rust hasn't taken too much of a toll on the thing it looks to be just surface rust so that should make it easier for us to restore it so we'll loosen the frog screws here then and then we can just actually remove the frog itself there we go so once we remove this screw here that's the last handle gone off. And now we can start working on the pieces one each at a time. Now that it's broken into all its different components, the first thing I'm gonna work on is the body. Now, the problem with the body is the paint is kind of chipping loose here, so I'm just gonna crack off as much as that as will come. And then there's a bit of surface rust, so for that, I like to just spray a bit of WD-40 on it, grab my nearest sending disc and just kind of scrub all that off. And you can see fairly quickly, it kind of makes this gunky, rusty, WD-40 liquid. And, and after a few times of just spraying it, sanding it, and rubbing it with a rag, it kind of eventually starts to remove itself and then you get the bare metal. As well, I'm just gonna spray it with a bit of WD-40 and use the rag to remove some of the old gunky sawdust that was there from God knows how long ago. See here how this paint is kind of chipping away. I think that's just because some of the later models they did some different painting process. I think it was sprayed on instead of like baked or something like that. I'm not too sure to be honest, but I find that the older models, the Japanning on it is much better than some of the later models. I reckon this is around um, 50s or 60s. Spraying it down with WD-40 and then rubbing it off with sandpaper is easily one of my favorite jobs in restoring old tools. It's just very satisfying to see the metal eventually start to shine through. So I'm pretty happy that I've removed most of the thick gunk and rust, but the next step is by far my least favorite. We need to get the sole dead flat. Now they're called a plane because they play in a flat plane. And in order for that plane to be the best possible plane, you need to have it as flat as possible. So behind me here, I have a slab of granite, which I know to be perfectly flat. So the reason I know this slab is perfectly flat is because in my parents' home, they have a granite countertop. Wasn't the Celtic tiger a wonderful time to be alive, huh? Anyway, if we turn it upside down like this, without breaking anything, you can see it moves perfectly flat and you can see they're very flush with each other. So if there was any rocking or anything, it would mean one of these isn't perfectly flat. Another fun thing you can do is if you get a bit of water here and you make a mess, sorry, ma'am, you can slide them around very easily and it's good fun. But also when you try and lift it up, they're pretty much glued to each other just because they're so tight tight and they fit together so well perfectly jointed so that is why this slab here will be perfect for lapping the sole of the plane perfectly flat so the first thing i'm going to do is just clean down the whole slab again wd-40 my best friend um, and just kind of give it a quick clean that removes any kind of little bumps or something that might stop us from flattening the sole of this plane now the next thing I have here is some, I think this is 40 grit sandpaper, so pretty um, rough stuff. And uh, I'm just gonna put the end of it under the slab like so. And that should keep it held down. It's managed to keep my jeans down anyway. And then bring it at the back here and fold it down and under. And then grab the sole of your plane here and just move it up and down along this perfectly flat piece of sandpaper. Now this is a process known as lapping. I think a lot of machinists use it for like engine blocks and stuff like that. It's a pretty old method. I think um, a lot of mills will get stuff so perfect now that you don't need to do it, but I don't have a mill. I'm pretty much entirely hand tools, or I try to be at least. So that's what we're gonna do here now for probably the bones of an hour, um, because we're gonna have to do the sides as well. So maybe not, it's 40 grit sandpaper, so. Should be quick enough, right? All 
and we can see already it's like um, nearly perfect. Another trick we can do is grab a pencil here like this. I think a marker works better. You guys probably can't even see these lines here, but you can go over it like that. And then you can see how much of your pencil mark remains. And that'll show you that there's a low spot here or yeah, a low spot here at the side of high spots. So that's pretty common with old hand planes. So what we're gonna do is keep on going until the whole plane is perfectly clean from each stroke. And then once I'm reasonably happy with the sole, I'm gonna move on to the sides. Now, it's not so important you get the sides perfectly flat or even 90 degrees unless you're using it for a shooting board. I actually think this one is probably already close enough to begin with. Yeah, that's pretty dead on, just a slight bit off. Um, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. Once the sole is dead flat, that's all I really care about for this one. If anyone ever tells you they're flat out, this is what they're referring to. You can see here, the, the rest of the sole is nearly perfectly flat already, but there's a very kind of low spot down here that I think I'm gonna be working at for quite some time. So I'm finished with the body now, I'm not gonna do any more work on it. But another thing that we need to lap, essentially make dead flat, is the frog here. So we can see that also has some surface rust. Now, the problem with that is, there's this little fella sticking up here, so we actually need to grab a little punch here and a hammer from somewhere. And I'll change the camera there now, but essentially there's a pin here that we need to knock the whole way through. So we have it in the vise here and I have the punch just like this. So we're just gonna tap that pin the whole way through. I think I might have positioned it in the vise poorly, but um, this should do the trick. There we go. So I have it on its own here now and I could lap it up here on top of the granite, but um, it's actually so small that I can grab the diamond stone that I normally use for sharpening Set that fella to 400 grit. Of course, we're gonna use WD-40 as lubricant, and then basically just lap it on that. So I have that lapped now, it's perfectly flat and the rust is gone. I also put the pin back in and we have this little um, depth adjuster here, working very smooth. So we can see the handle and the knob here. The varnish is very much chipped, so I think what I'm gonna do is just scrape the whole thing off. So we'll chuck it into our vise here like this. I have a card scraper and you can use that to kind of just scrape off whatever little bit of varnish is left. And then once I have it all off, I'll grab some fairly high grit sandpaper. I think this is like 240 and we'll just sand it all nice and smooth once again. Anyway, that has to come off. So we have a scraper here and we're just gonna brush it all off very easily like that. So once I have them all sanded, the brass nuts as well, um, I just grab a bit of steel wool here and I just kind of twist them around like that. Normally if I did have a power drill, the only time I would use them is I'd twist them, but I don't have them in the garage at the minute, so I have to do it by hand now. It's probably not necessary, but I think it makes them look a bit nicer when they're clean at the end. See there, it's kind of like buffed out already. So before I get working on the blade, I'm actually just gonna throw the body and the handles all back together, so that's just a simple matter of screwing everything back in to where it came from. Now they were a bit loose the last time, so this time, we we'll just give it an extra bit of force there and that shouldn't come loose. Give them one last go of sandpaper before we put them back on. Now, before I go any further with the handles, I'm just gonna put a drop of linseed oil on them now. That was a bit more than a drop, but that should do for the two of them. And that kind of protects the wood. I kind of like just linseed oil for tool handle finishes. I think kind of varnishes and lacquers or whatever they're called, lacquers, um, don't feel as good in the hand. Um, that'll dry in and uh, the oil from your hand over time will actually soak into the tool handle So the more you use a tool the, the nicer I find the handles become and if you put a varnish on that I feel like you're kind of protecting the wood from your hands oil, which I don't think is a good thing So here we have it now I'm gonna let that soak in for a while and then I'll come along with the tissue and wipe it all off in a minute But now we need to move on and work on our blade here, which by the looks of it doesn't require that much work so with everything else done, the last thing that's left to do is work on the iron. So first thing we're gonna do is separate the chip breaker from the actual iron itself. And that popped off fairly easy. So all the chip breaker needs is just a quick sanding to remove all the light bit of rust. But this fella now, there is a bit of rust here which we'll clean up. But the important thing is actually flattening the back here, which 
already looks fairly flat to begin with and then sharpening the edge there was a time where i would have used sharpening guides and honing guides and jigs or whatever but i've gotten to a point now where i can get a fairly good edge freehand so that's what i'm going to do today by lubing up the diamond stone here now this is a thousand grit which i feel is as far as anyone ever needs to go sharpening this kind of plane so i'm going to give the back a quick flatten there and then we can see that it's all the way out at the edge and then we can come around and hold it at roughly 30 degrees and move that back and forward the whole time and i'm just going to keep an eye on it to see are we making a, a little primary bevel there or a secondary bevel which is the piece of edge at the very end of the iron so again we're just going to lube up the diamond stone real quick flatten the back of it like this and then once we know this is flat we can bring it up to about 30 degrees and start moving it back and forwards. And we're just gonna keep on doing this process until I can see at the very edge, a little burr has started to appear, which is a tiny piece of metal that just kind of falls over at the edge. So the whole time I'm just checking to see have we met the edge yet and we haven't just yet, but um, I'm gonna keep going. So flattening the back with chisels, it's very important that you get a dead flat at the back, but to make life a bit easier for you, if you have to, you can lift the plain iron very, very slightly like literally less than a millimeter, and that'll allow you to sharpen the very tip or flatten the very tip of the iron slightly quicker. Um, now again, you can only do this with hand planes because with chisels, it'll ruin your edge, but we now have that fella dead flat. So now we can work on the primary or the secondary bevel here. Out of all the sharpening methods I've ever tried, I think the, the diamond stone has to be my favorite. They're cheap. This fella was only about 30 quid and I've sharpened this. I've been sharpening it with it for nearly half a year and it's never once let me down yet. So no complaints. So I think I'm fairly happy with the level set now. So I have a leather strap here, which is just a piece of leather and I'm just gonna rub it like this a few times and that kind of removes the burr and also polishes it. So. We'll just do this maybe about 10 times. And I don't know what it does exactly, but I think on like a microscopic level, it like aligns all the grains of steel. I'm not too sure. If anyone has any information, they could drop in the comments. I'd love to learn more. I know that it does work, but I'd love to know why. So I have this iron sharp as could be. It's shaving hairs off my arms, which once it does that, I'm happy that it's sharp enough to do most woodworking tasks. So I'm just gonna screw it back together. So we have the chip breaker here as well. So I'm gonna slide it on like this and fold it on over on top of it so that we don't damage the iron. And then I like to bring it just to the very edge here, just so it's about, just hovering around a less than a millimeter from the edge. Now, some people say that that's too far and some people say it's too close, but that's what works for me. So that's what I'm going to do. So I have a piece of spruce here and you can see we are just taking these beautiful shavings off it. Hopefully now the customer will be happy with that. I picked up this fella recently, it's a micrometer. It measures um, one thousandth of an inch. Um, so we'll see there now if we line it up here, we are taking shavings that are two thousandths of an inch thick, which is fairly good. Surely now anyone would be happy with that. Right, so lads, there's another hand plane restored. Um, I hope you guys learned something from this video or if not, just enjoyed it. Uh, I'll be able to get this back to its owner now, thank God. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys again.